All right, guys, uh, before you watch this video, a quick disclaimer. I never thought this video would take 63 minutes to make. After editing with everything else, maybe it'll be a little bit more. So I never thought it would take so long to create. There are more than, initially I came out with 23 points. It has come down to 29. So this video has a lot of content compressed. So what I suggest to you is, Watch this video, maybe you're watching it when driving, but save this video and watch it later bits and pieces at a time. Take down notes because this video has the wisdom of more than 25 years of me coaching and mentoring other people, which can really, really help you. And I want this video to help you. So I'm not going to put timestamps because then what happens is people just, uh, they don't actually value the video. They just skip over, go here and there. I want this video to be like a guiding light for someone who takes it very seriously. So someone who takes it seriously will actually listen to every point, stop. That's how I do it. So watch this video, the whole uh, of it. 29 points are there, even though initially I say 21 or 23. And uh, there's a lot of wisdom in it. I request you first listen to it, like how you do it when you're cleaning or driving or whatever. But if you want it to really benefit you, after you listen to it first time, then sit down and every single day, take bits and pieces, have a like time slot, write down the notes and refer to it. And I can assure you, it will genuinely help you. Okay, this is me sincerely speaking from my heart. I want this video to benefit you. But then, uh, end of the day, I leave it up to you. And yes, if you're one of those individuals who watches the video, right up to the end. Don't lie. Tell me truthfully that you've listened to all the 29 points so that I would know how many of you really value videos like this so that maybe I can make more because end of the day, like I told you, uh, YouTube is not for any commercial benefit. Rather, it's for my personal brand, but I can only enhance my brand if I genuinely offer you guys value. Okay, remember, the stuff that I'm sharing here is what I wish someone had taught me, but it was never available. It's not written in books. And the advice that I'm giving you here is so hardcore, so real. It's a game changer. Okay, so rest, I leave it up to you. Watch this video and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as usual, uh, let me know if there are other topics like this, because I'd love to share the knowledge and information that I have to help you have a better life. Having said that, enjoy the video. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. All right, in this video, I'm going to share with you 25 key strategies, points, uh, tips or tricks, uh, whatever you want to call it, to succeed in the corporate world, which I don't think is shared uh, or thought in schools, colleges, or people don't talk about them openly, either because, you know, they are insecure, they don't want to let out the secrets, or the, like they say, the cat out of the hat, or, uh, you know, it's, it's more like... Um, these are the strategies that uh, you know high-level performers adopt. And I've had the opportunity during my days in Dubai to meet with uh, some really high-level performers, be it luck or networking events or CEOs. And I've it is not stuff that I've read from books. It is what I've observed, what I've learned, and what people have shared with me in intimate moments. Okay, so these are 25 points. Uh, I want you to listen to them and then give me your thoughts, your views, which among them do you feel stands out? Which among them do you agree or disagree? Feel free, comment down below because I definitely, me and uh, you know the community, they always read. And if you have something to add in terms of value that is not there, please do share because you know we are all learning from one another. 
Okay, so um, just a short introduction. My name is Lloyd Macedo. I'm a personal branding strategist. I help people get well-paying jobs in uh, Dubai, UAE, and also Saudi Qatar, Bahrain, Oman. People also book my services for coaching, consulting, where um, you know personal or professional issues, challenges, uh, they matter. Uh, you can check the details down below. Okay, so here are the 25 key points. Let's start in no particular order. The first one, uh, this is, uh, these are the key points that I've shared with my clients. Like I don't share all of them, but when I evaluate someone, I give them, okay, I feel this is what you need or this is uh, what you should do or should not do. Okay, so point number one, it's not about uh, what you know. What you know is your level of skill, but it's about who you know. Because keep in mind that um, in the corporate world, almost everyone, you, you know, on any given job, they all have the same level of expertise. Okay, some may be better than the others where execution is concerned or expert, uh, let's say, knowledge is concerned. But if you want to succeed and climb at the top, it's not just what you know, it is who you know. Because remember, end of the day, contacts and connections um, definitely help. And if someone at the top remembers your name, remembers you, you'll always be uh, in the race uh, or uh, you'll be some of the top names that they would recommend for a promotion or for growth. Okay, that is point number one. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Uh, and even if you want to get a job, I always tell people when you're applying for a job, if you know someone or you know someone through someone and you can use a reference, your problems are solved. Second one, your boss is without a doubt the most important person for your career as long as you're in that company. Okay, um, your boss can make you or break you. Um, many people, um, you know, when whenever someone comes to me uh, with a problem, I always ask him, okay, what is your relationship with your boss? How is your boss? Do you like your boss? Does your boss like you? And the reason for this is if your boss, um, the person above you, immediate, the immediate one, he has a soft corner for you, I'll tell you, your life will just be much better than if your boss didn't like you. And if your boss doesn't like you, or your boss prefers somebody else other than you, it's it's going to be a very long, tumultuous, uh, you know, headache-filled process. In fact, you might even dread going to work because no matter what you do, no matter how much you put in, uh, somehow the person who the boss likes will always benefit. I've seen this during my days as an employee, during um, even when... I started as a freelancer and as working with, uh, let's say, CEOs or directors of companies and all that. It, it was an unspoken rule. Whom they liked, they always made sure that they pushed him. So you need to focus on being the boss's pet. And uh, the only other exception to the rule for this is if you know the owner directly. If you know the owner, right, the top guy, finished. Then all your problems are solved. Okay. Uh, number three. The chances of getting more money in the company that you're working are kind of slim. Most of the people that I know are always looking for a salary increment or they're looking for a raise. Now, if you're working for a government company that is regulated by policy or by, let's say, a monarch, let's say, uh, in UAE, you have the ruler who decides, okay, fine, government people will get this bonus and all that. They're fine. You can enjoy uh, sometimes one month, two months, even six months salary. Emirates Airlines, um, they constantly publicize whenever they give a salary increase, not increment, sorry, bonus. Okay, but they've, they flaunt it as, okay, we've given six months salary extra. What they don't tell you is we've just given them the base, the baseline salary, and we have not given almost everyone. It's a specific management uh, because... You know, just imagine having all these employees with such a large number. You can't give almost everyone. So there are slabs. So each one, the people at the lower level, their slabs are smaller. The people at the higher level, slabs are slightly higher. So they play around with those numbers. But keeping that aside, if you want more salary, uh, if you're working in the same company, because keep in mind, uh, why would they give you more salary? They would only give you more salary if you're doing more, adding more value, or you're giving them something which nobody else gave them, only then 
or you are given a promotion. Okay, so the chances are very less. The solution for this is work for a company for du the duration of a contract, then leave and try maybe a new company or your competitor. Always seek to get a new uh, offer, okay, especially when your contract is expiring. Number four, the chances of getting promoted in a company are almost zero to none. Okay, it's very, very rare. Uh, unless, of course, you're exceptional. Okay, um, like I have personally known in my, you know, 20, 25 years of doing this, I think there are hardly less than five people that I know who have been given a promotion in the same company that they worked for. Uh, the best one that I can recollect is this guy getting... Uh, he got um, promoted and sent to Europe as the director, the head. He started off at a very low position. See, during the 70s and 80s, uh, in the olden days, especially in the Middle East region, getting promotions were very easy because companies were all growing. The country was going. The economy was starting from zero. So even if you were an office boy, the chances of you becoming a director of a company were very, very high. Okay, very easy. Today, however, in the competitive landscape where everything has already reached the top and growth has become very challenging and, uh, you know, everything is cut through, it'll be very hard. So, and you'll not get a promotion unless there is a new vacancy created or the guy above you has left and there is a vacant slot and obviously you are the best candidate for it. So, it's very rare. If you want to get a promotion or if you want your responsibilities to increase, the only solution is before your contract is for renewal, start searching for another job and seek another company where you can be given more responsibilities and yes, obviously more perks and benefits. Number five is um, you have a choice between um, being friends with the management or with the workers. So choose which where, where do you want to be associated because if you're with the workers, well, you'll be very popular with all your colleagues. You'll be liked by everyone. But that's not going to help you climb the uh, corporate ladder. Um, it'll make you popular. It'll make you likable. It'll ensure that friendships and you'll enjoy going to work. But if you want to grow, you need to be friends with the management. You need to be friends with the decision makers. The only downside to that is you'll be very unpopular with the workers. Uh, they'll always call you a snitch. They'll always make life miserable for you. But you can be rest assured that, uh, you know, you'll be secure and your growth will take place. And I always followed uh, the strategy of being close to the management, especially the owner. I didn't give a damn or rat's ass about all the colleagues. In fact, I was ready to even throw my known friend or colleague under the bus just to, uh, you know, keep the owner happy. Well, it's a shark-infested, doggy dog world. You want to survive, you need to be the best. That is how it works in the corporate world. Whether you like it or don't like it, it's up to you. Uh, like they say, you know, good guys, they don't last. Okay, point number six. Uh, I always tell my uh, clients, follow these three uh, traits whenever you're in the office or go anywhere. Observation, observe very powerfully. Analysis, every person you observe, analyze them and strategize, okay? Decide how you need to approach them, how you need to deal with them, their plus points, weak points, um, you know, strength. Uh, just, just completely look at every individual in a very different lens and know what should be done. Should you talk more to this person? Should you talk less to this person? Should you keep away from this person? Should you mix more with this person? Should you... Make sure this person notices you. Should you make sure this person doesn't know you? You, you? you know, so observation, analysis, and strategization is the key. Strata, 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 strategization. Uh, tongue twister. I'll work on it. Stratas, strategy, strategization. Okay, whatever. Okay, number seven. Um, one of the key elements to succeed uh, is likability. It is not how much more you know. It is not how many degrees, qualifications, or credentials you have. It is, are you likable? Even when going for an interview, I always tell people, remember, if the guy likes you, your chances of getting the job are higher. But, but, 
that doesn't mean you have to smile, kiss ass, show a little bit of your boobies or, you know, uh, you know, start dancing to them. No, don't try to make it explicit like showing a big smile and, you know, being yes, uh, no, no. Uh, maintain your decorum, maintain your poise. Don't overly exaggerate, but make sure that you're likable. Make sure the guy feels you're trustworthy. Make sure that he feels a sense of connection. I used to read books on building rapport and all that, you know, mirror their image and all that. I've tried it. Doesn't work for me, at least. I don't know about other people. But uh, if you're likable, if you know how to handle different personality, that comes with experience. Um, you will, you, your chances of success are greater. And remember, it's not always giving the answer that they like to hear. Uh, sometimes, like this movie, in this movie, uh, uh, Three Idiots, it's a Hindi movie. Um, there's one character who always wants to succeed. I can't get his name. Um, he always wants to succeed. He's always pleasing the gods. He's always pleasing his teachers. He's always giving the right answers. But somehow he doesn't get uh, selected in the campus interview. Finally, when uh, he pisses off the dean, um, it, uh, as part of the story, the, the main character is Amir Khan, uh, who's a very famous actor. So he's friends with him. Uh, there are three guys. That's why the movie is named Three Idiots. So they they pull a prank on the dean of the college, the most powerful guy. Uh, they always try to pull his leg. And then uh, because he gets caught red-handed, he makes sure that this guy fails. And fails means he has been expelled. And uh, he couldn't handle it, so he commits, tries to commit suicide by jumping from the top of the building of his campus breaks all his breaks both his legs and this and that but finally uh, he, you know it's a typical hindi movie so he comes out does not die but now he's almost on a wheelchair he has not recuperated and he has to go for this interview with his this panel and um, you know as they're taking the interview they say they ask him a very like a uh, controversial question or rather a tricky question they say that um your personality uh, First, they ask him, like, what happened? Why are you injured or all that? He, and he tells them the truth. He tells them, I pulled a prank on the dean. I pissed uh, on his, in front of his lawn or something like that, whatever he did. And uh, then I got expelled and I tried to commit suicide. So the answers were very shocking. They're like, what the hell? You know, this is not the type of candidate. Because, you know, you wouldn't want someone who does all that. Okay. But he tells them the truth. And then after he says, uh, okay, the, like the three interviewers are very disturbed. And then he, they tell him, okay, fine. If you join the organization, you have to follow rules. You have to keep everyone happy. You have to, you know, bend over the thing. Uh, then you can get the position uh, because we don't want cowboys. You need to follow the rules. But then in a shock uh, twist, he says that, I'm sorry, but... Uh, uh, you know, I don't think I can do that. So they are like, what do you mean you can't do that? You know, because they are very important people. You know, they will select the candidate. He said, I nearly lost my life. I broke all my bones uh, uh, trying to please people. Throughout my life, I please the gods uh, because he worships Hindu gods. I try to please the gods. I try to please my teachers. I try to please society. And finally, what did I end up? Almost ended up losing my life. I've decided that I'm not going to please people. He said, uh, then the interviewers say that if you cannot please people, I don't think you're going to get this job. He said, sir, uh, then I don't think I'm the right candidate for you. I think uh, you should choose someone else because, um, you know, I'll stick to my values. You can stick to yours, you know. And then as he's, you know, he starts wheeling himself off, the three interviewers, one of them says, hey, young man, did I tell you the interview is over? So he says, oh, sorry, sir. I I, I didn't. Um, so he's waiting to get, uh, you know, schooled, like, you know, literally shouted. So the, the guy tells him, like, you know, I, young man, I want to tell you that I've conducted interviews my whole life and I've met so many students. Almost everyone gives me answers to please me, says stuff that they believe I want to hear and uh, is ready to bend over just any direction just to make sure, bend over, not sexually, means bend over just to please me. Uh, just to make sure they'll get the job. So you're the first candidate 
who refused and wants to stick to his values. So he is expecting him to say something really rude, and then he says, "And you're the type of candidate we are looking for." So the point I'm trying to say is, um, the science behind being likable is not always agreeing and saying yes, but it's being smart and intelligent to know when you have to state uh, explicitly um, about you know your rules or values and all that, and when sometimes you have to be a little diplomatic. Okay, so that's point number seven. Number eight is your image matters. Okay, um, there are some companies who are very particular about dress code. There are some companies who are very particular about, um, you know, the level of sophistication or uh, there. Clearly, you can make out I don't qualify for a very conservative company or obviously a company that follows basic protocol. They wouldn't want a tattooed looking like X Men uh, character. A Star Wars character. This is not cosplay. I am very aware of that. I'm not. A, I never employed. By the way, I never applied as an employee. I always applied as a consultant. So for employees, for people who are uh, applying as uh, to be a team member or to have a contract with them, your image does matter. So don't overdo it by putting too much because then they'll feel it doesn't fit in. At the same time, don't try to do less because remember. They should look at you as, wow, this is a worthwhile investment to have. Okay, so your image does matter. And that includes what you post on social media, what you share online, offline, and talk with other people. Keep in mind, sometimes your reputation will precede you, and sometimes it's as simple as Google search. So be very, very careful what you post and share online. Okay, uh, in, in fact, right now, the Israel-Palestinian war that is going on, um, quite a number of them are actually losing their jobs for having an opinion. So be careful, your image does matter. And uh, here one side tip I'll give you in terms of your appearance, and especially if you're a female, and uh, learn the art of putting makeup by going to a professional makeup artist. Some of them teach uh, classes. Uh, when I was in Dubai, there were a um, couple of people who asked to recommend to. Uh, if you're a guy, maybe you can go for etiquette classes. But remember, dress sense, get your suit stitched, okay? If you're serious about your job, get it stitched, don't get a ready-made, don't get one that looks like you're wearing your dad's suit. Don't put a tie that's dangling at one side. Make sure you learn the art of putting a tie, uh, the art of what color combinations to have. This is something I never knew, something that I learned only after getting into personal branding and learning by myself and interacting with people who had achieved success, who had been educated with the creme de la creme. It was a learning process for me. So remember, your image matters. From the shoes that you wear to the car you drive to the person that you are, okay? There can be rare exceptions where a person can, like pursuit of happiness, you can just uh, wear your clothes running from prison and have paint and all that like Will Smith and still get the job. But those are very, very rare moments, very rare. They have happened. I'll speak to you maybe in another video about it, uh, or I'll give you one small clue. This is uh, during uh, when I was 19 years old. The company's name was First Computers. They had taken a franchisee of, you know, those days they were teaching you uh, MS-DOS and Windows and, uh, you know, all the basic Excel and all that, um, computers, you know, all the basic stuff. So the owner of the company there, uh, everyone else, he, you know, uh, was wearing suit and tie, but the owner, he just wore simple clothes, like even sometimes jeans and slippers and all that. So I always took the opportunity to, you know, rub shoulders with the CEOs and, uh, you know, with the decision makers. So seeing that he's the owner of the company, I took an opportunity to speak to him just to get a few tips about life and success and, you know, just to get his perspective. And he gave me a story. I'll keep it very short on how he actually got the franchise for First Computers. So it seems that uh, him and six other uh, people were vying for this job. Almost all of them wore suits. Almost all of them had uh, PowerPoint presentations. Almost all of them carried, uh, you know, those days, slides and uh, graphs and images to put on the, uh, you know, ch uh, chart or something. Okay. When he went, he didn't have any of these slides. He didn't wear a suit. 
He didn't have slides. He didn't have a laptop, nothing. He just took a small sheet of paper, one, one paper. And uh, uh, where he had written down uh, numbers, numbers in terms of what is the expense, what is the cost, and what is his target. Just simple, couple of points in a small sheet of paper. So we, when he went there, they were all pretty like, what, what the hell is this? And they asked him, where's your presentation? He didn't have any. Where's your graphs? You didn't have any. He said, you got all this information from other people. What I've decided is I'm going to give you hardcore facts. And in a nutshell, this is what he had told them. He said, the expense of running this place is X. This is how much revenue should be generated to cover the X. This is how much extra should be generated to make it a profit. And this is my plan of action. And he had given everything in terms of numbers. And because he had written, written it down, he said, uh, this is a small sheet of paper. And he showed them the paper. And uh, he said, uh, you can keep it, uh, you, you know, you can verify. So he literally took a sheet of paper and noted down everything. And guess what? He got the job. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is your image does matter. Uh, there are rare exceptions like these, but majority of the time in the corporate world, you have to follow protocol. Okay, uh, and for women, please, just uh, not always, not everywhere does you know, showing extra helps. So just be careful there. Remember, being classy, having class works wonders any day. Number nine, know your value. That is in terms of money, in terms of numbers. Know your value and stick to it. There will be people who will try to squeeze you in order to get, um, you know, to join. Because remember, the biggest expense is salary. Uh, so stick to your guns sometimes, okay? The only exception I'll have to this rule is, because always remember, there'll be someone who's cheaper. They'll always get someone who's cheaper. But if you're really good at what you do, don't budge, okay? Don't budge because, and, but the, the only exception to this rule is, that is provided you have a job. If you don't have a job and you're desperate and you don't have any money, then obviously you'll have to agree. You can't negotiate. So know your value and stick to it. The only exception to this rule is if the person that you're working for can really help your career to grow, can really teach you, mentor you and guide you, then you can literally even work for free for a couple of months. Remember, almost every great um individual, every great person has worked for somebody and learned through them. Uh, I was watching this uh, chef's interview at Oxford, not interview, Stanford. He gave a talk. The The chef who, uh, he's French, I think. He mentored uh, Gordon Ramsay. If you can get his name, Pierre or something, I'm not too sure. He worked, even though he was at the mid uh, midpoint of his career, uh, he had an opportunity to work for a chef uh, who was a Michelin star and he actually worked for him for free for I think six months or eight months. No salary, nothing. He was literally living hand to mouth. Even in the movie, you know, Pursuit of Happiness, he literally works for free even though, you know, he needs. Now, obviously it's not practical, but where you can work for free, if you are learning something and benefiting, then fine. Ignore the know your value. But otherwise, Never work for free. That is why today, for me, I never offer anyone even a discount. Uh, very rare occasions. Very, very rare. Okay? Uh, but I stick to my price. I keep it at a premium because I I gave my sweat, blood equity, like they say, no? sweat equity, blood equity. I gave it all those years where I worked for people for free. And that's how I learned and reached where I am. Number 10 is you can either choose to be authentic or you can choose to be consistent. Okay. Now, what do I mean by that? Authentic is, you know, this word gets thrown around a lot in the corporate world. Be yourself. Be genuine. Let me give you a news flash. Nobody gives a damn or a rat's ass about you being genuine. You can be genuine, uh, you know, if you're a rock star or something. Like you can have a mental breakdown. You can shout. You can scream. You can take an overdose of whatever. You can be promiscuous. You can sleep around. You're being authentic. You're feeling horny. You're feeling abusive. You can use bad words. You can uh, do crazy stuff. Uh, and uh, being authentic means maybe you're feeling lazy. Well, I'm being authentic to myself. I'm being lazy. But customers, the employer, 
they don't give a damn about you being authentic they want return on investment they want you to be consistent they want to know that i i can predict the return on investment that I, the numbers he will give me let's say 25% returns every month and it sticks to 25% 26 even better they don't care about you being genuine they want results so remember between being authentic versus being consistent consistent always wins you can be authentic and you can be true to your values and true to your god and true to whatever they want consistent they want performance keep that much in mind that is why nice guys they are authentic but they don't succeed in the corporate world number 11 being truthful versus being diplomatic please think carefully before you're truthful you know if your boss tells you tell me the truth <laughs> it, it 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 sounds very nice tell me the truth and you'll feel like telling the truth don't do that it'll cost you more than you can ever imagine be diplomatic be smart be strategic even if you know the truth evaluate if i give him this will i be thrown under the bus can he use it against me you know remember he might be your friend today he can be your enemy tomorrow truthful versus diplomatic always be diplomatic okay uh the badge of honor oh no matter what he'll tell you the truth on your face and all that is sounds great okay but not in the corporate world trust me not in the corporate world because companies would always prefer the guy who plays the game the way they want it okay number 12 there is no work life balance there is just no work life balance if you want to succeed in the corporate world uh one second i just got this point before i lose it let me write it down um uh one second okay um yeah i'll give you this extra point bonus point at the end okay there's no work life balance you know people keep saying oh you need life is not about working yeah you spend so much time at work you need to spend time with your personal self you need to um uh, spend time with your family and that sounds good in theory in reality it's never the case why let's say for example you told a client come exactly at 10 o'clock you seriously think he's going to come 10 o'clock maybe he'll come 10 15 maybe he'll come 15 minutes late. maybe he got stuck in traffic he'll come half an hour late you can't tell the client bugger off unless you're some military you know regiment where come one minute late get lost or you're some ex- exceptionally powerful global brand where one minute you can just walk off in the business world if you need business you need to be flexible and keep people happy yeah you don't have to wait for 4 hours uh, you know but um, if the client is late if the person that is giving you the benefit is late you have to accommodate but now here's the problem once he comes late then the meeting goes you know over time and then you can't manage the other other things to do maybe you have emails maybe you have presentations maybe you have to complete stuff and suppose let's say you're with a very important client okay and uh, you need to finish and go home at 9 o'clock say uh, reach by 9 o'clock night but now the client is really enjoying your company and really wants to talk and it's a million dollar deal what are you going to tell the client i'm sorry i need to go home and spend time with my kid yeah that might sound very commendable which has actually happened i remember one particular guy during uh, city bank uh, when i was working for city bank this is starting at the age of 20 um is i think his name is amit vanshu i'm not too sure uh i once again was speaking to him taking his advice tips and tricks about life he said uh, i was at this meeting when suddenly uh, vvip is with it and suddenly my son called me he said as soon as my son called me i excused myself and took the call everyone was shocked because we are not supposed to take the call but i took the call and they said was it really necessary they explicitly asked me he said is my son is the most important thing for me is my family uh, it's it's my family that is him. in other words he i don't remember the exact words he said but he said my son is more important than anything else in the world okay and uh, i don't know maybe it was something urgent important whatever so what he tried to emphasize is my family is more important i'm not a slave to the job and all that that all sounds great if you're you know right up there but you can't tell your boss listen my you know child is more important than you then you'll say stay permanently with your child like my 
when I was working for my mentor, um, who is a successful businessman with 11 million US dollars turnover, um, he started off from zero. He earns 11 million um, annually um, with profits. Okay, so his brother worked for this multinational company, very strict engineering, oil field and gas supply company, uh, service company. So he, all the brothers, very, very spiritual, religious, all of them go to church five o'clock in the morning, uh, 5.30 in the morning. So uh, apparently what happened was um, he went to church like he always does every day, five in, 5.30 in the morning. And that was where his boss actually called him because there was an emergency that happened at an offshore site. And uh, he couldn't reach him. So after the church, one hour, this thing, whatever got over, he called back. His boss asked him, where the hell are you? Okay, I've been trying to reach you. So he said, I went to church and all that. So he said, obviously, the guy was British. He gave him a piece of his mind. He said, but God is important. You know, he was giving him all that bullshit. Then he said, here's a simple rule. If next time, when I call you and you don't pick up or give me a call back within a few minutes, okay, because it was company phone and whatever, they pay them a very high salary, saying you will be terminated on the spot, then you can stay in the church permanently. So this guy didn't know how to react. He went to my mentor, that is his brother, to ask him, what is his advice? Would he stand up for God or this thing? Even though... My boss is super religious and super spiritual. And uh, he has actually said no to clients when they ask for a meeting. And he prefers to go to his church first and then to the meeting. He told him, you on the job, you follow boss's instructions. You can go to the church in the evening or you can pray to God privately in the, you know, in the comfort of your home. Because if you want the job, here are the rules. You don't want the job, you can't lecture him about God. And very, you know, he put it in a very smart way. So he told him, you're on the job or you're on God? You choose one. Then afterwards, don't blame anyone for it. So he got the message. So the point I'm trying to tell you is there's no work-life balance. Sometimes you have to literally be at the beck and call of the company. And if you are that type of person who is there at the beck and call of the company, well, guess who will get the next promotion? Because they'll feel this guy is dependable. I know you'll say, no, I don't prefer to be that way. That is your choice. I'm not saying it's wrong. Next one. Uh, number 13, ah, office politics. You can't get away from it. You can't hide from it. You can either choose to be completely aloof from all the people. Never talk to anyone. Never keep any friends. Just do your work and go back home. You can either be that person. Or if you have even an iota of involvement where you talk to people and sometimes you get into making friends and all that, then you are involved in office politics. My suggestion, advice, guidance to you is if that is the case, then you must learn to swim with the sharks. Like they say, you have to learn to master office politics. That takes experience. That takes time. That takes observing and learning from the people who are good at it. So um, that is, I know it's very toxic. I know it's a, quite a headache. I hate it myself. That is why I chose not to be in the corporate world. But if you want to be, you have to learn to master office politics. Point number 14 is master communication, both written and verbal. Here's one thing which I want to tell you explicitly on your face. You may think you're very good at communicating. You may, majority of people think they are God's gift to mankind where Communication is concerned, both written and verbal. I can challenge you on this. You're not at all good. No matter how good you think you are, you're not at all good. Proof, make a video. Like, see, I'm speaking to you literally for the next one hour. If you can talk for one hour and make people want to listen to you, then you're good at verbal, verbal, only verbal communication. But the more important one is not verbal, it's written. Now, don't think you can go through some software or some Grammarly or some AI or ChatGPT and make. I literally get so many emails where people have used software to make their message flurry. I straight away, straight away, one line. I'm sorry, I do not entertain uh, AI generated emails and responses. You want to talk, you want to communicate with me. You chat, chat on WhatsApp to the point. And you know, here's a funny thing. You might make it a very flowery email, but when you chat, your, your real side comes out. And then when you have a video, 
If you use very bombastic language, very flowery, very corporate-ish language in your email, but the minute they talk to you face to face on video, you sound like a typical, uh, you know, a Indian who is normal, like, you know, with his thick accent. They will look at your email, they'll look at you, they'll be. It's like, you know, a female putting filters and trying to make herself look perfect with big eyes and, uh, you know, red rouge cheeks. And, uh, you know, she looks so cute and slim. But when you meet her, she has all these pimples, freckles, and boils and she looks like a like a horror movie like from hellboy i mean come on man so master communications for me i was exceptionally poor at communication but i didn't even know how to write three lines of an email um it took me literally i think um close to writing um you know when i started off my first article this series yeah this is not a joke the first article that I wrote for my website was, um, it's it's so stupid when I, if I was a ball, I was, uh, if I was tall and I had a ball and I hit it on the wall and it was so small and I, I wrote some garbage and I thought it was a masterpiece that time. So I had committed to write one article per day after I had written a hundred articles. When I finished a hundredth and I looked at the first one, I was like, oh my goodness, so embarrassing. The mistake that I made is I deleted all these 99 articles and I thought the 100th one was good. Then I gave myself a target, 500 articles. By the time I reached the 500th, when I saw the you know 100th article, I was so embarrassed. Then once again, I deleted all of them. Finally, I moved to 1,000 articles and then I realized the 500th one was not good. So every step of the way, as I got better, what... I shouldn't have deleted them. I really wish I had not deleted them because now I don't have a record. But I can tell you this much that when I look back on the olden articles, the old articles, it has shown me how much I've grown. Even my videos, if you check my oldest video, it's so bloody embarrassing. It's like, oh my goodness, I, I can't even bear to watch it. But it is the evolution that takes place when you keep honing a skill. I literally am not even exaggerating when I say this. 10,000 articles I've written, and that is how I improved my blogging uh, skill. And not before I used to struggle with the, even 50 words. Now I can easily write up to 3,000 words. Just one go. Just, I don't know. Even if I have nothing in my head, I'll just keep writing. And when I was in Quora, I used to write for 12 hours average, 12 hours every single day. I did it, I think, almost for six months, six to eight months. 12 hours every single day. I would keep writing almost 100 answers and not one line, but a whole big chunk of it. And that improved my writing skills. Same thing with public speaking. Uh, to improve, I used to practice 8 to 12 hours every single day, whether it was putting a pencil in my mouth, locking my jaw and learning how to articulate and move my lips, uh, whether it was uh, learning to throw my voice and speak from my diaphragm, whether it was learning stage time, you know, being on stage and being able to speak for one hour without getting tired, each and everything, I spent hours and hours. And once you give, like, the, you know, Malcolm Gladwell says, 10,000 hours you give, only then you'll gain mastery. I'm a very strong believer of uh, volume-based, you know, uh, intense approach. That's how you become like a grand master. Okay, so master communications. Point number 15 is master negotiations. Negotiation is a very high-level skill. It is not just using flowery words. It is observing body language. It's observing tonality. It's observing eye movement, uh, you know, body language, uh, like the way your hands move, the way your legs move, the way you sit down, the way you stand. It's all this. If you can master negotiations, I'm telling you, your life will just be unbelievably uh, better. I am still a student of learning uh, negotiations. Yeah, there are books written by the FBI, CIA, who... You can pick up a few tips, about, but there is nothing like being there on the field. It's like watching someone box and listening to someone tell you how to box versus actually boxing. The more you get into negotiations, the better you'll become. And how do you improve on negotiations is uh, either, either you know, running a business because then you have to negotiate with vendors, suppliers, customers, clients. That's the ultimate way. But if that is not there, the only time you learn to negotiate is maybe your salary, which you assume, 
But no, you're negotiating with your clients, you're negotiating with your customers, you're negotiating with your colleagues, with your wife. So make sure that you negotiate in such a way that you always uh, focus. The focus is win-win for a long term because if you keep squeezing someone, then eventually they'll stop dealing with you. So that is not the right way, which is very much an Indian or Chinese strategy. I, I will win only if you lose. That does not work in the long term. It is a very predatory way. Focus on making sure that you win where the other person, you know, enjoys dealing with you. And that is where you become a master negotiator. But sometimes you really need to squeeze a person down. That is if it's a one-time, uh, you know, transaction. So number 15 is master negotiations. Number 16 is you want to succeed the only way you can succeed is by being an opportunist. You cannot succeed by being a nice guy. You cannot succeed by not having that obsession of taking advantage of every single opportunity. There are people that I've known who literally, every single day when they get up, they literally try to see, how can I be noticed more? How can I network more? How can I uh, you know, promote myself more? How can I uh, uh, you know, get myself more out there? They and any opportunity they see, whether it is uh, a decision maker passing by, whether it is eating with someone who's a VIP, whether it is going for an event, they will never miss out a single opportunity. You want to succeed, be an opportunist. Yes, people will notice this. Yes, people will be like, oh, this guy again. But eventually, I'll tell you, uh, luck favors the bold and the brave. Okay, number 16 is be an opportunist. Number 17 is you need to be like a poker player. Never show your cards to anyone. Let nobody see what you have in your hand because uh, the minute you show your cards, you are digging your grave. Now, what do I mean by showing your cards? It is by being genuine. It is by being honest. It is by being open. It is by being transparent. Telling them how you feel, telling them genuinely, this is what it is. Don't do that. Just don't do that. Remember, um, in, in a game of cards, you know, why do they put glasses? Why do they, you know, just never change their expression? If you cannot be read, that's where you succeed. I suggest you watch some, you know, card game movies like The Rounders and all that. Wow, incredible. And if you want to learn how to play mind games, you have to be an absolute, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, you know, poker player. Never, uh, they say, no, have a poker face. Let nobody analyze you. Left hand should know what the right hand is doing. That kind of thing. Number 18, strategize in advance. You cannot come up with a game plan at the last minute. Yes, there will be a lot of changes. Variables will always come in. Uh, you, you know, unpredictable stuff happens. But always have a long-term plan. Okay, I want to get from here to here. That should be never changed. But then, you know, the way you get there, you will have to make modifications and changes, but strategize in advance. The people who have achieved their goals are very clear where they want to reach and they are constantly obsessed about it. Speak to any guy who is a triathlete, a marathon runner, um, uh, you, you know, a person who has a hobby where he's competitive. They plan out one year in advance what they want to do from their training, nutrition, health goals, weight goals, everything else. Yeah. whether even negotiating with a supplement company, I've done all this, okay? And that's the only way you'll succeed. But if you're the person last minute he decides, you'll be in for a bad surprise, okay? So strategize in advance your career, where do you want to reach? Only then you'll get there. Numbers 19 is be careful whom you, are, whom you associate with and who associates with you and whom your, you know, people assume that you associate with, okay? Because let's say, for example, I'll give a very simple one. Do you support Israel or Palestine? That will decide your future on which company or which uh, where you're working. Do you uh, support uh, BJP or Congress? Do you support Hindus or Muslims? Uh, what is your stance? Are you Republican or Democrat? All these things. Today, we live in a day and age where today you are being hyper-judged by your choices. Um, even if you are a bodybuilder versus you are a crossfit athlete versus you are a marathon runner speaks volumes about you. So that is why a lot of people are very careful um, what information they show on social media. And that is why many people even don't have social media or they don't keep it open because, you know, you can get misunderstood. 
Okay, so that is why, why do you think I keep my clients a secret? I don't want them to be associated with what I say. Because in the end, simply for nothing, someone will, you know, let's say a Muslim guy, an Arab guy, he is associated with me and I spoke something that was pretty hurtful or offensive or inflammatory towards uh, Muslims or Islam. Then that guy can even lose his job, you know. So uh, remember this much. We live in a day and age where today people are, trying to find the reason to, uh, you know, ruin your name. So just be careful whom you associate with yourself with. Number 20, be a smart promoter, a smart, intelligent one. Remember this, today almost everyone promotes themselves, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, in the office, out of the office, online, offline, Instagram, everywhere people are promoting themselves. So are you going to get into this crowded rat race like, if Instagram, let's say, for example, you are an exercise teacher and you are trying to show videos on Instagram. But then one, most other females, they are busy showing their bodies and, you know, trying to show sexy. And then you have guys who are trying to literally show six pack abs, but you are a very ordinary guy. Now, can you fight against them? Then can you fight against someone who has a big budget? No, you will constantly lose. So you need to pick and, you know, pick your battles wisely, which can be another point in itself, okay, uh, which, which I will put. Um, choose your battles and enemies wisely. Hmm. And I've said it, but anyway, I'll put it. Okay, uh, so be a smart promoter. The, the, the reason for this is, if you start getting into the game of what they are playing, most probably you lose. Like I told you, a lot of females who show their bodies. So now if you're a female who does exercise, do you get into that race? Because if you get, what about if a female who does exercise but has an OnlyFans account? Maybe she'll have much more followers. So do you go that route or do you say, no, I can't, I'm, I'm going to fail. There are some people who literally spend whatever money that they get. They put the complete thing for advertising. Why? Because they have a buffer. But now, can you compete with their budgets? A person who spends $1,000 to market themselves and get themselves noticed and you don't have $1,000, well, you lose. Even if you have find it, he has more than you, right? So that is why know how to promote yourself. Like, for example, me, I don't spend a single penny on uh, advertising myself. I don't spend a single penny on uh, buying views, likes, whatever. I've done it when Facebook and Instagram just started. I used to think these are legit $5, you get $1,000, this thing. I literally got, I think, 100,000 um, subscribers and you know, many likes and all that. But obviously, YouTube, uh, YouTube, Instagram, I didn't do it for YouTube. I did it for Instagram and I did it for my Facebook business page. It backfired big time because I think I'd got half a million or whatever. When they, you know, remove all dead accounts and all that, it goes back to square one. So I was like, oh, made a big mistake there. So don't, uh, you know, have an intelligent way how to promote yourself or you'll burn yourself out, especially in today's day and age. So in the corporate world, don't try to fight a battle that you cannot win, okay? So when you're promoting yourself, see how you can do it. If someone is related to the owner, obviously they'll be closer. If, if someone is like a family friend and they've known each other for years, you can't come in between them. So just understand how to promote yourself. Maybe instead of promoting yourself to them, maybe you can promote yourself to the industry. Maybe you can promote yourself by writing articles, maybe putting videos, maybe by going to each and every event and making decision makers notice you. So figure that part out. Number 21, hierarchy matters. Whether you like it or not, um, the person above you is more powerful than you, has more contact connections than you, and will always be preferred over you. Uh, even if you're right, even if you're a good guy, even if everything what you're doing is perfect. Because keep in mind, see, we live in a culture where people, instead of calling sir or mister with respect, they call themselves with the first name. They try to follow a very Western template. Like, for example, you see Jeff Bezos. If it's very much an Indian or Asian uh, upbringing, they would say sir, because he's Jeff Bezos. He's a legend. They'll say sir. Okay. Uh, or person who works Mr. Uh, Mr. Bezos, you know, with respect, even if he says, call me Bezos, call me Jeff, they would still, 
no sir i'm i'm comfortable i feel very uncomfortable i'll call you mr bezos if it's okay like my mentor i never called him you know by his name i always called him colonel because i knew him as a colonel he later on became a major but i you know would find it odd to call him major so i call him colonel to this date uh, i first met him when i was 20 so even today i call him colonel it's the respect that i give him like i consider him way above me okay so but there are people who literally call him by the name i even know some children who call their parents by their name but remember this you are fooling yourself if you think you are equal to them they might be humble and say call me jeff call me elon don't call me uh, mr elon musk or don't call me sir remember your place whether you want to buy it whether you want to practice it it's up to you but those who are humble like they say in the bible no those who are humble will be exalted so hierarchy matters don't think you are equal to the guys at the top they have worked their butt out there and that is how they reached number 22 know when to get in and know when to get out okay it's just like when you're having sex you don't get out at the right time you'll end up with that girl getting pregnant so in the same way in a company i know very crude example uh, okay but anyway in a company you should know when to exit the company there will be signs there will be red flags there will be you need to study and you need to have an open mind to know the red flags i think that also is another point here yeah, red flags uh how do i keep getting more and more points here yeah. but anyway i need to have that uh, why i'm writing it down so I'll, then i'll email this to my clients the whole list okay so what do i mean by know when to get out see there is a point in your career graph where your career starts stagnating and you are not going to grow anymore there are a lot of people who even though they know that they are not growing anymore they are not going to get any more promotion or they are not going to get a salary increment they still stick around and then it becomes too late what i tell people is there are these signs signals that will tell you listen no matter what effort you put it's going to stagnate it's time to get out and if you get out on time you will be able to take advantage of the opportunities maybe there is a management change maybe uh, you know there are rumblings in the market that uh, their market share is reducing maybe they are laying off people so before it happens you need to uh, take you know the the precautionary measures to get out and that is the only way you can save your ass okay number 23 is there's no loyalty only the loyalty you have to yourself many people think they have to be loyal to the company once upon a time it was like work 30 years or 50 years with a company and stay with them forever today that day is gone okay if you are loyal to a company one fine day they will terminate you either you are too old or they have found a better more viable option or technology has taken over or the department closed down or the company itself decided okay we sold off our shares they're going to restructure the whole thing they'll throw you under the bus so the only loyalty you have is towards yourself and which is where uh, it comes to work harder this is a, another point yeah how many points do i keep getting wait work harder on yourself than on the company which comes to the next point that is work harder on yourself than on the company um this is a practice i used to actually follow i know i'm getting too many points but i'm sure you will not complain when i used to work 8 hours in the company let's say for example 8 hours i used to always make sure that out of the 8 hours that i work 4 hours seriously yeah not 4 hours i promote the brand and 4 hours when i was promoting in the brand i would promote myself and the maybe the last 2 hours i'll do nothing but promote myself what do i mean by that i would go and meet those customers those clients those decision makers who would be of benefit to me more than the company uh, i would spend i know this is bad advice like i shouldn't be telling you this but during office hours i would busy focus on upgrading my brand maybe there are these five calls or these five meetings i can have which would uh, help me towards my future even though it would not help the company too much it little bit but like they say you know using the company stationery or using the company resources for your benefit people who are smart intelligent and um, savvy cunning or whatever you want to call it they do this and uh, they will not tell you they'll not talk to you but remember end of the day 
We only remember people who have achieved success or a big position. We don't remember the rest of them. So you want to achieve success, good, bad, ugly, do it the way you can without getting caught. So work harder, be loyal to yourself more than you're loyal to the company. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, point number 24. Yes, work harder on yourself than on the company. Um, that means... Focus on training, focus on getting more responsibilities, focus on knowing what the boss does and mastering his work so that it might look like you're doing extra work, but you're actually working hard on developing your skills. The more skills you have, the more expert you are, the more you can be rest assured that your job is secure and nobody can take your spot. And then that can be used to get a better job. Last one, two, three, four, five points. Last five. Um, Number 25 is the closer you are to someone, the bigger that bigger enemy that person will become, especially the colleague who you trust the most, especially even the boss who you trust the most, who knows you. He knows your drawbacks. He knows your plus or minus. He knows your history. He knows what other people do not know. So the day he becomes your enemy, you are in serious trouble because you have literally exposed yourself naked to him and he can literally get you in trouble. So remember, um, the closer someone is to you, the greater that enemy can be. So just be careful who's close to you. Um, number 26 is evaluate yourself every year. Okay. Uh, evaluate yourself in the sense that are you see every year expenses increase, cost of living increases, purchasing power decreases. We are living in this hedonistic treadmill where it's just becoming more and more expensive, more and more difficult, more and more complicated. So the question is, are you earning equally the same way? Otherwise, if you're earning the same, that means your purchasing power is decreasing. That means your ability to buy things is decreasing. You will not notice this, but it happens in very small, subtle shifts. That is why, you know, many people, when they open their wallet after they get their salary, where did the money go? They don't know. Loans and expenses, children's expenses, wife expenses. And I'll tell you, even today, at this point of my life, I, I have this rule applies to me. Like, you know, I was just supporting my wife and uh, taking care of my kid and spending money, and I was, I didn't even know how much money was going. Now that my wife and my kid is not here and I'm staying alone, I'm just shocked as to how much money I'm saving per day. It's unbelievable, seriously unbelievable. It's like. You know, I have to reevaluate how am I spending, how am I uh, saving, how am I earning? And I'll tell you, even when there's an exchange difference from the dollar to the Thai baht that I'm earning, uh, there's a small increase in units of electricity and all that. It's unbelievable how much you will uh, save or lose. So just keep that in mind that evaluate yourself every year. You're working for money. You must earn more money. If not every year, every two years, or worst case, every three years. Otherwise, you're just declining. Remember that much. Point number seven is, if you're playing cricket, play cricket the way the game should be played. You're playing football, play football. You can't play, let's say, cricket, which has a bat and a ball, small ball. Okay, If you know what is cricket, it's a gentleman's game. You can't take a football and say, no, this is what I feel like. In the same way, in an organization, if there are certain unspoken rules, okay, whose ass you have to kiss, what you have to do, what is expected out of you, what they actually have, there are these hidden secrets which are downright dirty at times. You want to survive in that environment. You play the game the way it is played and keep your values or inhibitions aside. If you can't, then don't get into that. Like, for example, the movie industry or the media, uh, it's an unspoken rule, a casting couch or, uh, you know, sexual favors and all that. Uh, I know so many, so many, so many of uh, people, uh, men, young men and young women uh, who got into this industry, who believe that, no, I'll take the high road and I'll not do all these things. I'll not bribe anyone. I'll not sleep with anyone. One day they reached a roadblock and they realized I can't get through this gatekeeper. I'll have to say goodbye to my career. So what will you do? So remember. You want to play a particular game, there are rules. Don't bitch about and moan about if you can't follow them. Okay. Number 28, which I spoke to you before, choose your battles wisely. There are some battles which are not worth being fought. 
this is something I should have taught myself. I engaged into drama with people who are not worth. There are some people who just love politics, love drama, love fighting. They'll just ruin your life and make it miserable. So please choose your battles wisely. There are some people who are just like the sewage. You throw a stone in that, it'll just splash all over you. Just avoid such people. So instead of focusing on fighting with them, rather I would suggest, like what I would have told, should have told my younger self is, instead of fighting with them, apply for another job elsewhere. The headache, the stress, the effort that you'll take will be much better. So because maybe fighting with him, you'll, you might win the argument, but he's going to come back to you. It's like he'll never die. He's like a cockroach. So it's like throwing a stone in sewage and it splashes on you. Rather than that, just resign. Let him feel he won. Go join a new company. Get a better income or get a better environment. You'll be happier. Choose your battles wisely and your enemies. And last but not the least, the point that I stated before is there are a lot of red flags that keep appearing time to time. Signals. Your boss is suddenly not talking to you. Your colleagues are acting a little funny. The salary is being adjusted or it's being delayed. Profits are declining. Uh, the boss seems to be coming, you know, more time to work or the boss is not present. Something is happening. There are a lot of red flags that keep appearing or they have employed a new person and uh, they're giving a lot of attention and you're asked to train this person. These are the red flags that, or maybe your boss was never nice to you. Now he's very nice to you. Always be mindful of these red flags and uh, keep in mind that uh, they will appear. It's only a matter of time before what you intuitively feel will actually come true. Okay. So these are the, initially I thought 23 uh, points or whatever. Now it's 29. These are the 29 points which I want to share with you. Um, unbelievably, 63 minutes have passed. Um, I hope this video benefits you. Good, bad, ugly. Feel free, comment down below. Let me know if there's any clarification or questions that you have. And uh, do watch this video later on. Uh, keep it as a saved video and I hope this helps you succeed in whatever you do. So anyway, this is the video. Good, bad, ugly. Feel free, comment down below. This is me signing off. You guys take care.